now. And now, it's Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on CL 650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. Studios, here's your host, Tyler Gray. This is Key of Vancouver Soccer Talk. We are broadcasting from the Barber & Co. Studios. The second half kickoff brought to you by findaproperty.ca. Find your next home at findaproperty.ca. Good evening. My name is Tyler Green. You can find me on Twitter at TylerGreenFC. Simon Fudge is at SimonFudge74 on Twitter. And, of course, the show at Soccer Talk 650. Lots of Whitecaps chat in the second half of the program, along with David Sandals talking injuries in just a moment, but time for some Italian scores and what's coming up for that league. Presented by Via Tevere Pizzeria Napolitana, 1190 Victoria Drive, serving up true wood-fired Neapolitan pizza in East Vancouver. Absolutely fantastic. Simon, have you gone yet? Not yet. Not yet. He's got to get, get, get there. And watch out for their food truck as well. It's around town uh, each and every week, especially for lunches uh, downtown. If you're uh, working business downtown, check it out. The Via Tevere uh, Neapolitan Express. Simon? The Italian Serie A will return from the winter break on Monday. Lazio will play Sampdoria in the lone game Monday night. There will be two, uh, nine games on Tuesday evening in Italy. The feature ones are Udinese against Roma, Cesena against Napoli, and the Derby d'Italia, or the Derby of Italy, Juventus against Internazionale. All right, time to chat with expert physios David Sandals. In tonight's injury report, the injury report is, of course, brought to you by Expert Physio in Burnaby. They are online at expertphysio.ca. They are on Twitter as well. Uh, you can find them just by uh, searching for Expert Physio. And joining us on the program is Expert Physio's David Sandals. David, thanks for joining us. Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you, Tyler, and to Simon, too. Now, uh, let's uh, get right into it because there's a, a new surgery that uh, I, I don't think I've ever heard of for knee uh, for a knee injury, but Sebastian Cristoforo of uh, Sevilla in Spain having some knee issues and went with a lateral plasty surgery. So explain that to us. Yeah, well, I, I guess we'll start by talking about the dreaded anterior cruciate ligament, ACL repair, and what can happen when it is not so successful, of course. We've seen great success this uh, season in the Whitecaps, but uh, but uh, with Sebastian, he had uh, he had his repaired last March um, after an injury playing for Seville, and uh, and uh, did come back in December, played a couple of uh, couple of cup matches, uh, but wasn't doing so well, and they had it reevaluated, and they decided that uh, he still had some instability. Uh, that being that there's some looseness in the knee. Now it wasn't so much the the, the, the the, the the tibia, which is the shin bone, kind of like slides out from underneath the uh, femur, um, the the long thigh bone. Uh, and that's what you find uh, with, when the anterior cruciate is completely gone, we call it an sort of anterior laxity. It's more of a, a rotational movement that one of the things the anterior cruciate does is it, is it helps to pre prevent the uh, tibia from over-rotating underneath the femur. Um, and what was happening with Sebastian is I, I think he was still getting some uh, some some extra rotation uh, that um, uh, that was causing him some issues. Um, and this particular surgery actually isn't that new, but it, it, it's sort of kind of uh, disappeared for a while, and it's coming back as a sort of secondary thing that you can do should you have a, a failed ACL. Um, uh, or a situation where we have this shifting or this rotation we call a pivot shift in the knee. And what it is basically, it's, it's they kind of shore up the lateral collateral ligament. Um, it's on the outside of the knee, and the lateral ligament sort of goes straight up and down. And what they do is they, is they put a little bit of extra tissue. They can take it from something called the iliotibial band, slide it under the lateral collateral ligament, and it's kind of at a little bit of an angle as opposed to straight up and down and helps prevent the tibia, the, that's the shin bone, from rotating in. And it's called uh, a lateral plasty. And this is, uh, this is what uh, Sebastian Cristoforo has, has had done uh, as a sort of secondary uh, surgery. The upside is, is um, they don't have to go inside the knee to do it. It's, it's not inside the joint. It's on the outside of the joint. The downside is it's still a six-month-plus rehab. So uh, we'll see in six months or so uh, how successful this has been in this particular case. Now, David, uh, January is the time that everyone's got New Year's resolutions. Everyone seems to have that resolution of, of getting fit. Uh, is this 
sort of the busiest time for you as people sort of uh, get those uh, workout related injuries for them for their New Year's resolutions? Uh, I wouldn't say it's uh, any busy in any, any other, other time, really. Um, certainly, we, we see that throughout the year where people get workout injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, it depends. Uh, usually, you know, in the new year, there can be a little bit more of a tendency to go at things a little more hard, uh, get injured, and then uh, just sort of uh, lick the wounds and say, well, that's enough of that. <laughs> End of that resolution. <laughs> I think we've all, we've all probably experienced a little bit of that uh, almost at any time of the year. Uh, you cannot really get fit quickly. Um, it, you know, it has to be uh, something you build up slowly. Uh, it's no different um, with the guys at top level. And uh, hopefully we'll be, uh, we'll be talking to uh, the, uh, the head uh, physiotherapist, the Whitecaps, in a, in a week or two. We talked about that. Yes. Just, about, um, just about how that works at, at the top level. So, so anyway, if there's any advice to anybody out there, it's, uh, it's uh, yep, yep, follow through with your resolution. Expect things to uh, to go a little slowly and and take things one step at a time. And if anybody should uh, get some New Year's resolution injuries, David will send them over to you at that yeah, expert. Thank you Physio. very much. Thanks again for joining us. We'll talk next week. Yep. Okay, Tyler. Bye for now. Thanks again. That was David Sandals, uh, physiotherapist at Expert Physio. If you care about your health, why not work with the experts? Expert Physio can get you back to full health. Convenient clinics in Burnaby Heights and at eight ranks. For information on the services they provide, visit expertphysio.ca. That's expertphysio.ca. And uh, David uh, was referring to, uh, David and I had a conversation that uh, uh, he obviously knows uh, Rick Celebrini quite well. Rick, of course, with the Vancouver Whitecaps, with the Vancouver Canucks as well. And so uh, we're going to uh, have a little uh, conversation between the three of us, mostly between uh, David and and uh, Rick about a lot of physio uh, needs and what it really takes to, to be at the top of your game and, and uh, how he gets a lot of those guys back healthy and back in the game uh, very quickly. So look, uh, look for that uh, coming up in the weeks to come here on Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk. Yeah, that, that I think will be very interesting because um, f- from what I've been able to gather, and I, I haven't sort of gotten a chance to talk to him too much, I think Rick Celebrini is probably one of the more innovative uh, physiotherapist out there mm-hmm. um, and I think the Whitecaps are extremely fortunate to have him particularly be head of their sports sciences department because I think he is someone who's probably uh, well ahead of his time right now in terms of uh, being able to rehab people I mean I think what they did with Medi Bellucci was an absolute miracle and I'm sure he, he cannot thank them enough for having been able to get him back on track because if he was anywhere else in MLS, he could have ended up seeing his career probably come to an end. He would probably have been forced to retire. Yeah, and Rick Celebrini just uh, this uh, this season started with the Vancouver Canucks as one of their top uh, physiotherapists, basically, uh, again, a special um, physiotherapist. He worked with a lot of players in the past with, with getting them back healthy, back in shape, back from an injury, so, um, you know, helping uh, those guys out as well. So, uh, a great resume that Rick Celebrini's got. So it's going to be a, an interesting conversation between David Sandals and uh, and uh, Rick Celebrini and just really the, about the physio world. So look for that in the next uh, next couple of weeks. Get into Kia Vancouver because, hey, they, fantastic sale right now. They decided to continue their Boxing Day sale until January 10th. So it's all this week, all the new stock. All the new in-stock vehicles are being sold for a toonie over dead cost. So what does that mean for you? It means that you can save up to about ten grand in savings. So absolutely fantastic prices over at Kia Vancouver. You can find them at 396 Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon or online at KiaVancouver.com. Our Barber Poll tonight presented by Barber & Co. That's barberandco.ca. Do the Whitecaps need to sign more scoring after the acquisition of Octavio Rivero? You're getting quite the simple answer from uh, from Pitbull Boy BC, who uh, comes uh, gives us his thoughts quite a bit on the program here. He's saying, "Yeah, Stevie G." <laughs> so he obviously wants Steven Gerrard to come to. Uh, to Vancouver. Well, those of the Merseyside persuasion or, uh, or or support a certain team in red that's based on Merseyside are probably maybe making the odd phone call and leaving messages with Pop Leonard to see people yeah, we, say, we, you we know, should, we yeah. should chat with uh, Steve Speed, who's, of course, the, the head yeah. of the Liverpool uh, supporters group here in Vancouver. See what he uh, 
if he wants Stevie G to come to Vancouver. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. It's just a quick poll. Would they amongst, have? Would they have a red yeah. section all yeah. of a sudden? <laughs> if, if look out of place, but you know, <laughs> yeah, it, it yeah, would it be quite weird. bizarre. But it'd be interesting to see. Take a real quick poll once they were all convened for a Liverpool game to see how many of them would like to see him in white caps, blue and white. That'd yeah, be well, interesting. Uh, we uh, you know, find out. Uh, take a look. See when uh, Liverpool plays next. We'll head over to the pub that they uh, frequent and check it out and find out. All right. The poll question, like we said, the Barber poll, do the Whitecaps need to sign more scoring after the acquisition of Octavio Rivero? You can weigh in at Tyler Green FC, at Simon Fudge 74, at Soccer Talk 650, but Simon and I will give you our answers next. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC. This is Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on Sea Isle 650. Wherever you're taking your team in 2015, Kia Vancouver has you covered with the best selection of award-winning vehicles like the 2014 Kia Soul and Sorento and surprise offers on new in-stock 2014 and 2015 models. Plus, at Kia Vancouver, new Kia buyers get free lifetime car washes, oil changes, and free airport shuttle and parking, making it easy to take your team out on the road and up in the air. Kia Vancouver, Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon and KiaVancouver.com. Pain or injury slowing you down? Take it to the choice of many top athletes. Expert Physio. Serving the Lower Mainland for over 35 years, the team at Expert Physio is dedicated to individualized care with specialized services such as orthotics, acupuncture, IMS, plus dizziness, pelvic floor, and certified hand therapies. Over 300 physicians referred to Expert Physio last year, and 100% of patients surveyed said they choose Expert Physio again. You're in good hands with Expert Physio. Burnaby Heights or at 8 Rinks. ExpertPhysio.ca. The family story begins generations ago on Via Tevere, a street in the heart of Naples, where food was the celebration of life. Today, in East Van, Via Tevere Pizzeria Napoletana honors their family heritage with La Vera Pizza Napoletana, pizza that showcases authentic Neapolitan ingredients and the time-honored tradition of wood-fired cooking. Come experience La Vera Pizza Napoletana, true Neapolitan pizza at Via Tevere Pizzeria, 1190 Victoria Drive, and look for the Via Tevere Neapolitan Express food cart around town. The truth is, you just don't know what to do anymore. You worry about mom or dad being home alone. You worry if they're eating, if they're getting out, if they're lonely. Retirement Concepts is here to tell you seniors living isn't what it used to be. It's all about a balance of chef-inspired good meals, good friends, and beautiful accommodations. Join us for a complimentary meal and personal visit. Go to retirementconcepts.com to find a retirement community close to you. So nice to come home to. Retirementconcepts.com Think great tasting vegetable dishes are made here in the kitchen? They actually start here in the field with top quality BC fresh produce like rutabagas and cabbage. Amazing flavors, because like all BC fresh produce, they're harvested fresh and travel 100 kilometers or less to arrive at your plate. So choose the produce with the BC Fresh logo. And for easy how to use them recipes, visit bcfreshvegetables.com. This is Kia Vancouver's Soccer Talk on Sea Isle 650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. Studios, here's your host, Tyler Green. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Get into Kia Vancouver. Their Boxing Day Ooh, child, sale continues all this week with all new in-stock vehicles being sold for toonie over dead cost. That could mean up to ten grand in savings. You can find them at 396 Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon online at kiavancouver.com Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack on Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk continues fantastic soundtrack by the way fits so well with the uh, with the movie as well Simon have you even have you seen the movie yet no unfortunately I haven't I'm not good for movies Simon has not seen a movie since 1987 I'd, I'd <laughs> say a little bit more recently but yeah like I said I'm not good for watching movies not sure why but uh, Greg, have you seen it? I have not seen it, unfortunately. One of 2014's top movies. Whether you're a comic book fan or not, it, you know, it, uh, obviously it has, you know, you have to suspend belief, but, uh, you know, some comedic value, some action. 
talking raccoon. <laughs> I do dig the soundtrack, though. And a, and a fantastic. I do remember seeing Spaceballs back in the day, which was a, a sort of parody on uh, Star Trek or Star Wars by uh, the late great, uh, um, the man who did Blazing Saddles. Uh, Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks, yeah. Spaceballs came out in 1987, so I was correct in <laughs> in figuring out that the last time that Simon went to see a movie was 1987. It had John Candy in it, did it not? <laughs> oh, it, it did. did. It, it yeah. did, yeah. Playing, was it Barf? Yes. Yeah. A dog, wasn't it? Yeah. Half, half man, dog, half yeah. dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's his own best friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening. This is, of course, Key of Vancouver Soccer Talk, where sometimes we talk some movies. We are broadcasting from the Barber & Co. studios. My name is Tyler Green, Simon Fudge, and I will now answer the Barber Poll in a moment. Of course, we'll do that in a moment, because you've got to uh, give us a little bit of an update from Germany. Yeah, they're in the middle of their winter break uh, at this moment in time, but they will be returning to training this week ahead of Getting back to action on the weekend of Friday, January 30th, Saturday, January 31st, and Sunday, February 1st. Uh, those are when all the teams will be back in action in Germany's top flight. But at the moment, they're on hiatus, but they will be back uh, getting back into shape after uh, probably a well-deserved uh, holiday break. Yeah, judging from some of the pictures, they had a very good holiday break. Tonight's Barber Poll... Brought to you by Barber & Co. Get the authentic straight razor shave or a haircut, whatever you need, at barberandco.ca. Check out the Canby location. They've got uh, some specials on Monday and Tuesdays. So uh, check it out at barberandco.ca. The Barber Poll is, do the Whitecaps need to sign more scoring after the acquisition of Octavio Rivero? Tweet us your thoughts at Soccer Talk 650 at Tyler Green FC, at Simon Fudge 74 Simon, what say you? Yes, they do. Um, I, the only thing I think it's a bit of a debate is, is someone of a higher profile coming in or someone of maybe vast experience in this league that might be a relatively expensive ticket be following Octavio Rivero as, as another attack uh, attacking signing at this club. Uh, we have to keep in mind, Tyler, that uh, the target that Carl Robinson had stated back to when, when we uh, we all had a chat with the members of the media back in September is that uh, there were about five or six new players he was looking to sign and that two of them were supposed to be strikers. Um, and also at the same time, he, he was very much committed to having Darren Max even be part of the team at that time. So... Uh, I think he will boost the strike fourth. I think he doesn't. He think he needs to try and boost that strike fourth. Certainly, if the money is there and there's a player available, and uh, I'm just ever more curious to know uh, what he's been up to in Europe because I wonder if there is a target or he has identified uh, a player out there uh, that he wants to bring in. I think, as I answer the barber poll, and then we'll get into a few. Uh, a few other little things that we were chatting about prior to the show. I think they need to sign some more scoring. And really what I think they need to do is, is sign a guy that has been a consistent goal scorer throughout his career, whether that is just a major league soccer journeyman that has been a goal scorer that you know is going to be able to put in a certain amount of goals per year or a guy that's been a prolific goal scorer in Europe at some point and can transfer that now to Major League Soccer and with the Whitecaps and be that guy that can score goals, I think they need to sign some more guys. As some of our listeners have pointed out via Twitter in, in their comments, you know, as much as Darren Maddox, Eric Hurtado, Kakuta Mane have some potential as being able to score goals, I think the potential that we see in Darren Maddox is kind of dwindling. We know he's probably going to get about five or six goals a year at that price tag. Is that worth it? Eric Hurtado last year looked like he could have that breakthrough, looked like he could score, but is he going to bring that and take that to a next level and continue to score more goals? Kakuta Mane still unproven, has shown glimpses, but has also shown glimpses of being just not very effective so they need to sh need to shore that up and they need to make sure that they have that guy that can score a lot of goals but one of the things we were talking about is 
okay, well, if they do bring in that guy from Europe that is a proven goal scorer, that is possibly a big name, well, how do you sign him as a DP if you've basically, you've already got three. You've got two young DPs right now in Laba and uh, Rivero. Although Rivero, there's question marks as to whether he's going to be, you know, a, truly is a DP or not. Um, and then you have, uh, uh, of course, uh, Pedro Morales. So, you know, what's the, you know, do you look to get that fourth DP role? Is Do you use allocation money to try to spend down? It's going to be an interesting time to see what Carl Robinson exactly brings brings in. And, you know, also, if they've got somebody to come in as a, a big name, big price DP, are they looking at it as a, hey, maybe, possibly, we're going to see a, uh, a uh, another DP slot opening up to, with the new uh, CB that's going, uh, CBA that's going on right now. You wonder if they potentially know something that we are not aware of uh, that's making them kind of do things. It's almost a little bit with the cart before the horse, but in a lot of ways that's maybe how they and many other clubs are probably operating right now because they've been given a bit of an indication of what's on the table for the new CBA and that pretty much that's going to be agreed upon between the league and the union. So that's allowing clubs to maybe get out there and, and get that business done to, to work within maybe some of that new framework. It's hard to say. Um, the one thing I wanted to, to raise, which I think is kind of important, when Kenny Miller... When when Kelly Miller moved on in the, in the spring, um, the one thing that the Whitecaps really lost was sort of an, a de facto captain of the attack. He was their only ex really experienced kind of goal scorer, someone who's been there, done that, uh, who can pass on a lot of advice, be a mentor. Uh, they didn't have anybody amongst any of their strike force that fit that mold. And you wonder a little bit as well if if that other signing or the, the, this other addition that may potentially be coming in be also uh, of that type of mold, brings those types of intangibles to the table as well. Because if you look at it at the moment, even with Rivero being added to that strike force, it's still very much made up of young guys, uh, relatively unproven guys, um, that you know, e in each and every case could do with having someone alongside who's a teammate, but also potentially a mentor as well. It uh, It is interesting. It is going to be very interesting to see exactly what the Whitecaps do in that scoring. Uh, we talked a little bit about what the Whitecaps need to do. They need to solidify that back line, make sure they get some central defenders in there. And, and, and in there soon, I think I think pretty much everybody thought that, you know, either Johnny Leverone or Andy O'Brien would have been signed by now. They, I yeah. think a lot of people would have thought that those deals – would have been done by this this point in, uh, in in sort of the off season. Where else do you think the Whitecaps need to look at to, in order to you know whether it's adding little pieces to the puzzle or really a a, a guy that to slot in and be a starting player? Well, midfield uh, because obviously they've lost Bellucci in the expansion draft and it's, obviously Sebastian Ferrer is not coming back, so that's two first team midfielders out of the lineup so yes they do have the young players coming in particularly Bustos and Froze that offer that sort of depth option um, but they're likely going to be mainstays in the USL pro side and that's really where they should go at the start of the season so at least one or two more midfielders I think probably need to be considered maybe one of them needs to come in a trade and there's also that that point that had been bandied about and I think it's a very good one as well that they need a natural winger some kind of attacking winger probably on the left hand side at least to take away the real need to put Kakuta Mane out as a wide attacking player in that position get someone in that is natural of that position that gets really Kakuta used more effectively up front I think that's something that the, that the Caps need to do because uh, they are at least a player too short, even in in that area as well. Yeah, I, you know, I I like what they have in midfield. I like some of the options that they have in midfield. I like some of the players that they have in midfield. I think putting guys in there for depth, like you said, somebody that can play out left would be great. But I do like the fact that they have that speed. But it all depends on really how that how they line up. If they play that diamond, they don't necessarily need those wide mm -hmm. 
uh, type players. They need those guys that can uh, still be able to pass the ball, move the ball around to, uh, to some of the more skilled, or not necessarily the more skilled players, but the guys that can score goals and put them into a goal scoring situation. And I think they have some of those guys right now, so they don't need a lot more in that. But having just that one player that could really, uh, I think, make a difference and really step in, regardless of position, is really still what they need. They've got, you know, Pedro Morales, and he's done that, but he's showed signs of tiring. Is that going to be a factor? You know, are we saying that, oh, it was just the fact that he was playing in Spain and he was getting used to the league, or is this something that we might see out of a Pedro Morales, that he doesn't have the capacity to play a full season and be involved in all the games all the time, all at once? So uh, I still think they, they still need that player that, you know, when you look at it, the Whitecaps really quieted down when the other team put, hey, let's – stop Pedro Morales, so they still need that other player that can really step up and do things, you know, without needing to receive the ball from a, from a Pedro Morales, can do things on their own, and I think that's still something that the Whitecaps are looking for. I'm curious to know, and I'll ask you this question, in terms of if you were going to bring in midfielders, one or two more, should they be players that are versatile, can play more than one position, um, or specific role players, like one someone who can effectively replace Morales in his position or someone who's specifically able to play wide? Do you, what do you think suits better for them in terms of looking at new players in midfield? Well, I think when I look at thinking that they're going to play that diamond midfield, just somebody that can get up and down the field as a box-to-box midfielder but can contribute a little bit more on goal situations and be a little bit more of a threat offensively has a, a good shot and a good eye for uh, passing the ball around is what I would look for. Yeah, I think that would probably be the thing to do in it because, as you say, lots of options there, lots of different types of roles and different types of strengths and abilities within that existing midfield. It's a question of adding and, and, and filling in areas where you may only have one type of that type of midfielder. Can you get someone in who can back that up if you don't have that main player available? My name's Tyler Green. Alongside me, Simon Fudge, our producer, Greg Ballack. This is Key of Vancouver Soccer Talk. We get into the substitutes. The substitute starting 11 questions. They make their first appearance, and we'll dive into those next. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC. This is Key of Vancouver Soccer Talk on Sea Isle 650. The Straight Razor Shave, a leading man classic. Steady hand coaxing the rugged face back to smoothness. This nearly lost art has found revival at Barber & Co. Hot towel, straight edge blade, and your face. It's an experience that reminds you you're alive. You're a man in the company of history's finest men. Start at barberandco.ca. Pick your barber shop in Yale Town, Gastown, the Financial District, can be at 18th, and now Main Street and 12th Avenue. And relax into the big leather chair for the shave of your life. Wherever you're taking your team in 2015, Kia Vancouver has you covered with the best selection of award-winning vehicles like the 2014 Kia Soul and Sorento and surprise offers on new in-stock 2014 and 2015 models. Plus, at Kia Vancouver, new Kia buyers get free lifetime car washes, oil changes, and free airport shuttle and parking, making it easy to take your team out on the road and up in the air. Kia Vancouver, Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon and KiaVancouver.com. What do you want? A balcony so high it looks down into soccer matches at BC Place. A pub I can walk to with a dozen big screens. Kevin O'Toole has created findaproperty.ca to help you find it. Designed to be simply straightforward, findaproperty.ca is an invaluable tool. That's Kevin O'Toole, Royal LePage, Sussex, for buyers and sellers in the greater Vancouver area like you. So find what you want. A backyard big enough for my own soccer pitch. At findaproperty.ca. Whether playing soccer on this continent or football on every other, Umbro is the name worn by top players and teams worldwide. Those same uniforms are available for your team or club at Umbro.com. Umbro, proud to be the official supplier of Canada's men's and women's national teams, is celebrating 90 years of expertise in the game. If you want your club to play like the pros, dress them like the pros at Umbro.com. Umbro, the heart and soul of football. 
Sold in over 70 countries, Italy's signature white wine is Santa Margarita's Pinot Grigio. And here in Canada, it's the number one selling 750 ml bottle. Santa Margarita's Pinot Grigio is also the only wine sold in Canada to be carbon zero certified. This means the environmental impact of its production has been offset by investment in environmental initiatives. After all, exceptional wine can only be made in an exceptional setting. Outstanding quality, sustainable production. Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio. Available at BC Liquor Stores. This is Kia Vancouver's Soccer Talk on Sea Isle 650. Now broadcasting from the Barber and Co. Studios. Here's your host, Tyler Green. I like CCR. I'm a big fan of CCR. So am I. Big fan yeah. of John uh, Fogarty as well. I am as well, yeah. Uh, played a lot of baseball growing up in center field. One of like, the all-time best baseball songs. Mm. Used to play it all the time. But Greg had such a great theme going with the Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm not like ripping the song in, in general. I'm just saying he had such a great theme going, and then all of a sudden he just goes off course for the it's the last uh you know one of the last songs you're gonna play well he is a baseball fan so was that a curveball no i just change it sure sounds like tyler's ripping the song though he said he wasn't i guess, no, he, I guess he really don't like Don just, i'm saying you changed it up from your the theme that you had it's called the some of the songs didn't have fantastic intros so i couldn't use them all i had to pick one that didn't uh, didn't flow with the theme and i thought it was still from the same era, so maybe it would work, but I guess you decided to call me out on it anyway. Well, it's not on the awesome mix, number one. That's probably the... It's on my awesome mix, number one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get into Key of Vancouver. Boxing Day sale continues. All this week until uh, January 10th, all new in-stock vehicles being sold for just a toonie over dead costs that could mean up to 10 grand in savings it's kia vancouver you can find them at 396 southwest marine drive at yukon kiavancouver.com the substitutes in a minute but some spanish scores with simon fudge now yeah spain back at it after the winter break five games today atletico madrid beat levante by three goals to one it was sevilla one celta vigo nil elche drew 2-2 two -two with villarreal and deportivo la coruña beat athletic bilbao by a goal to nil it was malaga one almeria two four games tomorrow the feature ones include valencia against real madrid and real sociedad against barcelona on monday cordoba play granada hooked on a feeling you couldn't have worked hooked on a feeling in with the intro Little cherry bomb. I think if you tried a little bit harder, Greg, could have worked out. I'm just going to play them off my phone. That's why you pay me the big bucks, Tyler. <laughs> Our barber poll today Do the Whitecaps need to sign more scoring after the acquisition of Octavio Rivero at Tyler Green FC, at Simon Fudd 74, at Soccer Talks 650. You can weigh in on the barber poll at uh, any time that you'd like to. And, of course, uh, you can do so also. Check out our Facebook page and like it at facebook.com slash soccer talk van. Let's bring in some substitutes, and uh, uh, we've got three of them here on the program. We'll start with the, the first sub, and it's current Derby County manager Steve McLaren is uh, the odds-on favorite to take over at Newcastle. Simon, should he? No, I think he should stay at Derby County and do his utmost um, to take the team that he has built, uh, particularly of, of a number of very good young players, um, and get them out of the championship and into the Premier League. Um, I also think um, the ownership group that he's, he's part of, which includes obviously Mr. Jeff Mallett, who's co-owner of the Whitecaps, is a much more stable situation. Um, and he's also got to consider as well the fact that um, if he's been given the leeway to manage the team the way he wants to at Derby County, then he should stay put because the problem with Newcastle and the reason effectively why Alan Pardew has left to go to Crystal Palace is basically because uh, I think the, the meddling of, um, of Mike Ashley, the, the owner of Newcastle, in terms of the affairs of the team, how he wants to move and sell players, undermines whoever is the manager and the head coach. 
there at St. James's Park. So I, I think he should stay where he is. He's got a fantastic chance of being able to be in the Premier League next year with the Rams. I look at it and I I like all of the points that you've made, and I you know I probably think that way. But aside from that, I think if you are given an opportunity to go into the Premier League back to where you ultimately want to go and you get that easy situation of being there and with the possibility of really doing some good things to a team that's not horrible. They're not great. They're not horrible. They're sort of mid, well, they're 10th place right now. But if you can do something nice with that team, you could even go on to something a little bit better. And I, you know, I get that feeling that Steve McLaren is going to be the guy that takes goes and takes that job. I, I can see it. I think if you get an opportunity to go to the Premier League, we see it so many times that you go and you take it. And that's what I think Steve McLaren is ultimately going to do. We see it with players. Oh, big, big club. They want me. I'm going. And then they, not, you know, they don't, it doesn't necessarily work out for them, but I think he'll end up taking it. Could happen. Um, and I remember very famously when I was working at Sky Sports, and uh, he was in a very good run of it as Middlesbrough manager. And when they, when Leeds United sacked David O'Leary, I remember he was very much tapped up uh, for that job by uh, by the chairman of the time, Peter Ridsdale. And of course, uh, that didn't end up happening. Um, and uh, within about I think a day, uh, it ended up being Terry Venables who succeeded uh, David O'Leary. But uh, uh, prior to that, and when, when the rumor went round that Ridsdale asked Steve McLaren, would you be interested in taking the Leeds United job? He said yes, according to uh, the sources that uh, that I uh, that I heard from from one or two other people that I used to work with. So, All right, the second substitute, Justin Bieber, the pop star that everyone wishes wasn't Canadian tweeted photos of himself uh, playing football in an Everton white and purple third kit. Is that uh, good or bad news for the Toffees? Well, well <laughs> um, I, I would think it's um, it, not something that would digest very well for Toffees fans, and it's been a bit of a rough time of it uh, there at Everton. Um, that's a shame because, I mean, everything that seems to get tagged with 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 Justin Bieber in any sense it seems to be you know not of not of a positive light um i don't know it, it does give a bit of a uh, a bit of a bad omen of sorts i guess but uh, is it being are we looking into this a little bit too much <laughs> well I, you know what i look at it there's two way i think there i think there's a good thing and i think there's a bad thing with Justin Bieber uh, wearing an Everton jersey one in bad is that you know any i think person that likes music or just hates crappy music will be like oh this is just horrible for our club justin bieber is such a, a weaselly guy or you know just not a good person what have you and just look at it in such bad light and, and probably some negative press but he has so many fans that that was favorited over 75,000 times. It was retweeted over 100,000 times. I have to think that, and here's the good, I have to think that they probably sold a bunch of those third jerseys, granted to a lot of probably teenaged girls, but in the end, making money off jersey sales to anyone i'm pretty sure the club doesn't wouldn't care if they sold if they sold an extra 20,000 of those jerseys because Justin Bieber wore one pretty sure they're probably kind of happy oh i'm sure yeah yeah and i'm sure uh, mr dolan will uh, be one have a big smile on his face as well being that it's an umbro brand jersey as maybe well maybe it so. was paul dolan who got him in that jersey <laughs> That's an interesting conspiracy. Oh, Maybe conspiracy we should ask him. Theory. Yeah, <laughs> hey, hey, there you go. Have you guys ever taken a stroll through Bieber's Instagram or, or Twitter page? No, because I <laughs> have no desire to look at anything involving Justin Bieber. You're not even curious a little bit to see what's going on? No. Wow, because there's, there's some pretty funny clips. He, he posts these little videos on his Instagram of 
sports clips where he does something fantastic, but you can totally tell it's just his buddies setting him up to throw down a slam dunk or whatever. And there's a or hockey he's done clip. it 40 times yeah, to get it right. It's so scripted. You can tell it's a little 15 <laughs> second clip, right? I'm surprised he didn't do one while wearing the Everton jersey. Do a, a soccer Well, apparently he did. Did uh, he we, post a movie? We, no videos, just yeah. a bunch of pictures posted. Yeah. Well, the clips are the, are the hilarious one. If you're going to lo- go look at some videos, go look at that because it's so bad and he – plays it up like he's the he's the big man but uh, you can you can just totally tell it's so scripted and 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 quite funny actually i find all right i'll take your word for it greg uh the uh, another substitution here on uh key vancouver soccer talk simon which minnow would you like to see knock off a premiership side in the remaining fa cup matches this weekend Oh, there's really only one for me, and it's uh, it happens tomorrow morning at Hewish Park in Yeovil in Somerset. Uh, my grandfather used to play for Yeovil Town, and uh, as much as they're struggling uh, in League One right now, uh, I'd love to see Gary Johnson and the Glovers knock off Manchester United uh, in their third-round cup tie. Yeovil uh, made themselves famous uh, by beating Sunderland many, many, many years ago as a non-league team. Uh, they have great... FA Cup pedigree and, and folklore, um, and it'd be wonderful for them, particularly with the struggles they have had this season, if they could pull off uh, what would be quite an enormous shock. Uh, I think the last time we saw something of that stature was when Shrewsbury beat Everton with a certain Wayne Rooney in it. So it's been quite a few years ago since something like that has happened. And uh, But yeah, for me, I'd love to see the Glovers knock off United. Yeah, I, I always... In terms of, um, you know, FA Cup games or, you know, whichever kind of cup competition it is, I, I always have a real desire for the the really small teams or the, or the you know, like you said, a Shrewsbury or, you know, somebody that really where the guys, you know, half the guys play, they get paid, but they all have side jobs yeah. elsewhere. And, and you get to see some of those stadiums where, you know, there's a few thousand seats in a stadium and, and you can, they set up the, the TV cameras and you can literally see outside the stadium and see the road and the buildings behind it because the stadium is so small. Uh, and, and I kind of like to see some of those. But um, so I went with a smaller side in in the team that I would like to see win. And that's Dover Athletic. Uh, they play in the conference primer, uh, primer, so which is basically the the fifth level of English soccer. Um, Dover Athletic to beat Crystal Palace, who's not necessarily you know one of the the top, uh, obviously Premier League teams, but in the Premier League nonetheless. And also, I got some you know family connections to that Kent area, uh, so uh, Dover Athletic would be the my choice of, of teams that I would like to see happen. It's a good shout. I have Kent uh, connections as well through my mom. So uh, Dover, as you say, uh, is something of a, of a town that I'm relatively familiar with myself. Um, that has got a great potential of happening because they're at home on their pitch, and you don't know what the kind of quality of the pitch actually <laughs> is. And they are playing a struggling premiership side with, I think, probably a debut for Alan Pardew as manager. So that could be quite interesting tomorrow. Yeah, and and it's one of those things of where you look at, okay, um, you know, talk about that fact of, uh, you know, playing at their pitch, which capacity just under 6,000 people. Um, But also... um, you know, here's a team that's struggling, like you said, in, in the Premier League. So, or of late, you know, what what is your focus? Do you, Is that really a competition that you want to really put a lot of focus on? Or is it just uh, a competition that, yeah, you, you might be able to go out and win that game um, with ease. But then you've got to worry about another, you know, another fixture coming up. Or is it let's put some of the younger guys out there. Let's see what they can do and really have these guys focus on what the big thing that is at stake. You know, obviously there's some money at stake in, in advancing in the FA cup, but the real goal is to try to stay in the Premier League because that's really where the big money is going to be for you. So it's going to be an interesting to see exactly um, where they line up. 
the middle sides just want to say they should believe that they can get something uh, anybody who's playing tomorrow because, I mean, Blythe Spartans, I mean, this is a team that's two levels below Dover and playing the seventh level, playing the Northern Premier League and um, or the Evo Stick Premier. And uh, they were 2-0 up against Birmingham today. And uh, from the looks of it, I actually saw their second round uh, replay, I think, it or second round tie against uh, Hartlepool of League Two, which was an all-Northeast clash, and they looked excellent in that game. Uh, when they played them, and today to be in the position they were, and obviously have it turn around on them suddenly with three, with three goals in six minutes in the second half from Birmingham, very disappointing on for them. But it just shows you what is possible, especially if you're at home and you're playing the bigger team. It is also fun to, uh, you know, see some of those sides just in general, um, you know, play and and see what they can do and and uh, another uh, very small side is uh, Salford City FC and Phil Neville and Paul Scholes were in charge of Salford FC a team that they own 50 percent of along with of course uh, former Manchester United teammates Ryan Giggs, Nicky Butt and Gary Neville they won the game 2-1 over Kendalltown they now have new management in place, but was it kind of, do you think, maybe a bit of a publicity stunt to have Phil Neville and Paul Scholes in charge of one game? Could have initially looked like that, but probably knowing them and from that part of the world, it probably was just one of those logical things of, okay, well, they were in transition between managers and uh, they just sort of, being the football men that they were and being that they own it, they probably went in and said, okay, well, we'll do the caretaker job here and get get the job done and get get it done and and uh, and then allow for the new manager to come in so I'm thinking a lot of that was probably going through their minds as well yeah you know I think part of it is publicity stunt and hey people are going to talk about this but at the same time if they lose uh, that looks pretty bad on you <laughs> to step in there and, and lose a game so you know it's a risky uh, publicity stunt I, I, I would think so yeah like you said I think it was Oh, well, we need to take control of this for a, a game, and and they went out and did take care of it for a game. And speaking of Phil Neville, he admitted on BBC Radio Five live this weekend that up until uh, this past week, he's never made a cup of coffee in his life. Give us some of the minor details on that. Well, it was about three days ago. He said, uh, and he had a, a journalist over. Might have been, I think, from the Daily Mail. And and so when he had them over, for, as he was being interviewed. Uh, by the, by the journalist, he basically asked that journalist, you know, what would you like to drink? And the, and the journalist sort of turned and said, uh, I'd like a coffee. And I guess as soon as the journalist said that, his heart sank, and he basically said to himself, well, how do I do that? And he, he, he was quoted as saying, I ran into the kitchen and thought, I'm going to poison this guy. So I, he had to ring his wife to find out how <laughs> to make a cup of instant coffee. Um, and... He, he did so, but then he forgot to ask his wife about how much milk he was supposed to put into it. Here's a guy who is, has won premiership titles and, and played for England and whatnot, <laughs> and 37 years of age now, but that was his very first time that he made a, a cup of coffee. But you think this is odd? I, I, it is a little bit, yeah, that because um, I, I would have thought that, if you didn't drink coffee all that much, you would have at least, particularly with instant coffee, which is almost no different than making a cup of tea, because that's a tea bag with boiling water in a cup or, you know, in a pot. It's the same kind of logic. Um, and, and instant coffee over in Britain is, is is far more common in terms of it being consumed than it is here, because Lord knows I drank it more than enough of it when I was working <laughs> over there and doing shifts at, at SkySports.com. And, um, to me, it is a bit strange that that's one little, very tiny thing uh, that, that Mr. Neville has never uh, attempted to do before. Uh, but it made for uh, quite an astounding admission that got quite the reaction of his BBC colleagues when he when he admitted to this on Radio 5 Live yesterday. Well, here's the thing. I have never made a cup of coffee. I have won, or I have drank, a single cup of coffee in my entire life. The first time I ever tried it, thought, this is gross. This is disgusting. I don't want to drink this. So, and I didn't make it. I just drank, I didn't even drink the whole thing. But I have never drank it since. And I have never made a cup of coffee. 
I've never made an instant cup of coffee. I've made, never made a regular cup of coffee. I've had people over, uh, various, you know, when you've had a party and people stay over and they, they get up and it's like, yeah, Starbucks, right on the corner. Head on down. Here's my keys to get yourself back in. I have, I do not have a co I don't, I, well, actually, I do now own a coffee maker because uh, I got one with doing the show, but I, it's packed in a box. And, uh, but I do not own a coffee maker in my place. I have never owned a coffee maker in my place. I don't even own one of those French presses that people make coffee with. And I don't think I'm the only one because Greg is in the other side <laughs> being like, I have not. I'm, I'm same thing. pointing at myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I've never, you know, I'll, I'll get a cup of coffee for, if I'm out and I, and I desperately, desperately need something to stay awake. I'll take it over an energy drink. But I do have no desire in the mornings to make my own cup of coffee. I've never owned a, a coffee maker of any kind. Uh, instant coffee just sounds disgusting. I don't even <laughs> want to try that. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm not a not a coffee drinker either. I think it's a, is it a dying thing? I don't think no, it is, it's, it's not dying. We're just we're just too uh, too we're just uh, too liars uh, here. You know, we're we're too uh, we're special we're, people. We're keeping it strong, Greg. We're holding out. <laughs> We're the anti-authority coffee There's people. something still odd about <laughs> not having made coffee. There's nothing. For somebody no else, at least. I could not, I, if you asked me to make coffee, I would not. I would be no. very confused. I could do the Tassimo here at the, at the radio station. Right. You stick the pot in, and you close it, and, and then it goes. So that's easy enough for me. But to actually make coffee with like an actual coffee maker, I, I'm lost. Not that odd. Not that odd. And I think nowadays, with... Places like Starbucks, you know, uh, Second Cup, whatever, all the Seattle's Best, what, all the coffee places, there's a whole bunch. Um, I think more and more people probably don't even make coffee anymore. They probably just go and pick it up in the morning. So, you know, I don't think it's as odd as, as you think it is, Simon. I think I'll borrow a phrase now from Phil Neville and say this is a soccer program, so we should probably <laughs> get back to talking about okay. soccer, right? Well, so. we'll take a quick time out here on the program, but we're going to be back in a minute with the final cut. And hot fudge. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC. This is Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on Sea Isle 650. Whether playing soccer on this continent or football on every other, Umbro is the name worn by top players and teams worldwide. Those same uniforms are available for your team or club at Umbro.com. Umbro, proud to be the official supplier of Canada's men's and women's national teams, is celebrating 90 years of expertise in the game. If you want your club to play like the pros, dress them like the pros at Umbro.com. Umbro, the heart and soul of football. What do you want? A balcony so high it looks down into soccer matches at BC Place. A pub I can walk to with a dozen big screens. Kevin O'Toole has created findaproperty.ca to help you find it. Designed to be simply straightforward. Findaproperty.ca is an invaluable tool. That's Kevin O'Toole, Royal LePage, Sussex. For buyers and sellers in the greater Vancouver area like you. So, find what you want. A backyard big enough for my own soccer pitch. At findaproperty.ca. Not that your stylist at the salon isn't doing a good job, but man, you deserve the big red leather barber chair experience of Barber & Co. Here's how it works. Go to barberandco.ca. Book your appointment at one of the five barber shops in Gastown, Yale Town, the Financial District, Camby at 18th, and now Main Street and 12th Avenue. You can just walk in, too, and get your hair cut, hot shade, buzz cut, fade, or beard trim experience. A great wedding party idea, too. Barberandco.ca. Wherever you're taking your team in 2015, Kia Vancouver has you covered with the best selection of award-winning vehicles like the 2014 Kia Soul and Sorento and surprise offers on new in-stock 2014 and 2015 models. Plus, at Kia Vancouver, new Kia buyers get free lifetime car washes, oil changes, and free airport shuttle and parking, making it easy to take your team out on the road and up in the air. Kia Vancouver, Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon and KiaVancouver.com. 
Remember the flying pigs? Yeah, they're as Vancouver as rain in December. They're back. Inspiration Furniture's Flying Pig Floor Model Clearance event is on? Yes, with huge savings store-wide. 40,000 square feet of rare winged once-a-year deals. Quantities are limited, so hurry in for the best selection. Inspiration Furniture's famous Flying Pig Floor Model Clearance event is on now. But the deals are flying out the door, so hurry. The Flying Pig Floor Model Clearance event. 1275 West 6th in Vancouver. Oink. Do you hear that? That's the sound of your pills. Now, more than ever, we need you to help stop the abuse. Last year, thousands of Canadian parents helped us return 44 tons of drugs. It's a good start, but we all need to do more. Return all unused prescription drugs to your pharmacy. Do it now. Save our kids. Visit CanadaDrugFree.org to find out how. A message from the Partnership for a Drug-Free Canada. This is Kia Vancouver's Soccer Talk on Sea Isle 650. Now broadcasting from the Barber & Co. Studios, here's your host, Tyler Green. All right, it's time for the final cut brought to you by Barber & Co. On Twitter at Barber & Co. Five full-service barbershops for your big haircut, hot shave, buzz cut, fade and beard trim. Get the ultimate barbershop experience. Five locations to serve you again. Gastown, Yaletown, the Financial District, Cambian 18. And the new spot on the corner of Main and 12, barberandco.ca. For the final cut today, I want to wish a couple of birthday greetings. One to uh, Jorge Mendoza. Happy birthday. Um, I thought he was like 45, but he says he just looks uh, 45. But, uh, you know, he's not that old. Early 30s. So happy birthday. And uh, happy fifth birthday birthday to my daughter Ashlyn who uh, turns five on Monday going to uh, she's seven uh, the, the the big kid birthday party tomorrow mm. on Sunday my little pony themed that's gonna be fun uh, it's gonna be real fun I can't I can't wait for, for that party to sounds happen. equestrian <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. um so that that's uh, happy birthday to her, and then happy birthday to uh, my cousin Scott as well. Mm. His birthday also on Monday. So, some birthday cuts on the final cut today. Right now, Kia Vancouver offering free oil changes, car washes, airport parking, and shuttle service. It is only at BC's number one Kia dealership, Kia Vancouver 396 Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon, KiaVancouver dot com. Oh, baby. Hot Fudge with Simon Fudge. Well, we're back from the holiday break, and so I want to make a message to everyone out there. It's uh, playing on the soccer team. And as you're getting back into the soccer playing mode as early as this weekend, potentially, or even next weekend, make sure to ease yourself back into that mode, stretch and warm up well, because the last thing you want to do to start the new year as you're going into the, this half of the season is get a really bad injury. So make sure to do everything that you need to do coming off the holiday break. I got a game uh, tomorrow night, unless uh, somehow we get the snow. So it should be fun. Got another week myself, so there we are. There you go. For the, the for the crew here at Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk, my co-host Simon Fudge, producer Greg the Hammer Ballack, and a special thank you to Thomas Rage and Fred Anko. Thank you for the continued support. My name is Tyler Green. You can uh, see some of the stuff that I write at tylergreen.org. Thank you for listening to the program. You can download the podcast at cisle650.com. Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk returns next Saturday at 10 o'clock. We'll discuss what the Whitecaps should do with their draft pick, with their super draft pick. Who might be available next Saturday at 10 right here on CL650. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC. This is Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on Sea Isle 650. Wherever you're taking your team in 2015, Kia Vancouver has you covered with the best selection of award-winning vehicles like the 2014 Kia Soul and Sorento and surprise offers on new in-stock 2014 and 2015 models. Plus, at Kia Vancouver, new Kia buyers get free lifetime car washes, oil changes, and free airport shuttle and parking, making it easy to take your team out on the road and up in the air. Kia Vancouver, Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon and KiaVancouver.com. Tony Holler, owner of Poplar Grove Winery. 
At Poplar Grove, we like to say that great wines are born from the courage to go beyond what's possible. Every day, I am surrounded by an inspired team dedicated to bringing out the Okanagan's full potential in each bottle. Come see us at the winery and join us on our journey to make truly great wines by becoming a member of our wine club. Visit us at poplargrove.ca to find out more. Poplar Grove, available at Private Fine Wine Stores. What does the new year mean to you? A new year means new beginnings for you, your family, and even your home. At Surrey Upholstery, we make the process of restoring your furniture, drapery, and blinds refreshingly easy. We'll come right to your home with fabric samples and offer our expert guidance and advice. Then we'll provide you with custom quality options for your furniture, drapery, or blinds. Begin anew with the choice of interior decorators and designers. SurreyUpholstery.ca. See before and after photos and get a free online quote today. 